exclusive Mac Studio is coming. Is it the Pro Mac Mini or the Mini Mac Pro? This is from 9 to 5 Mac popping fresh off the rumor report blogs and it concerns what they're calling a Mac Studio. And they say based on information seen by 9 to 5 Mac, the new Mac Studio is primarily based on the Mac Mini but with much more powerful hardware. And they do say that the name Mac Studio may change. I mean, Microsoft has a studio, which is essentially their version of the iMac, but with a touch-based screen, because studio sort of implies like an art studio where you might find something like uh, an easel, an artboard. And maybe this is meant more like it'll be in recording studios, video production studios. And there were also rumors that Apple might have called the highest end AirPods, the AirPods studio, because of Beat Studio, that would just, that name, that brand would just carry over. But Apple ended up calling those, wait for it, of course, the AirPods Max. So actually embracing the name Studio, using the name Studio is, it's certainly something. One features the M1 Max chip, the same as the 2021 MacBook Pro, and the other a variant of the Apple Silicon chip that is even more powerful than the current M1 Max. And that might be, likely will be, uh, a dual die M1 Max that would have basically double the cores from CPUs to GPUs to neural engines to uh, media engines, just double everything, including the potential RAM. And just saying that it's a Mac mini-like device, but with higher end, more pro level components, that sounds like what we already have with the Space Gray Mac Mini. That's what Apple did when they relaunched the Space Gray Mac Mini back in 2018. They sort of resurrected the Mac Mini, but instead of making it the $500, yeah, you know, bring your own keyboard, monitor, and mouse for everybody, they made it much more focused on higher end pros. And that to this day is still running on Intel. It is yet to be embraced. It is yet to be transitioned to Apple Silicon. So. Would Apple, could Apple, should Apple differentiate those lineups? You wouldn't have a Mac Mini and a Mac Mini Pro, but you would have a Mac Mini with an M1 chip right now, presumably an M2 chip, maybe as soon as the now officially announced Apple event on March 8th. And you should absolutely, definitely hit that subscribe button and bell so you don't miss all the videos I'm gonna be making just the moment that event ends. But could they, would they, should they, separate those lines more. So you have a Mac mini with the M2, and then you have the Mac Pro at the very top of the line with a quad you know, M1 Max, at least to begin with. Should they have a different brand, a different name between the Mac mini and Mac Pro? It's sort of ideally placed where a Mac mini, the higher end Mac mini used to go. And I'm really excited for this machine. The rumor itself doesn't sound any different than the rumors we've been hearing about a higher end Mac mini, just called the Mac mini for a long time now, just the presumption being that what had the M1 is gonna get the M1 Pro and the M1 Max and maybe that new redesign. But this makes it sound like maybe that new redesign will be exclusive for the M2. It'll be a colorful redesign like the um, iMac got last year with the M1. We'll now have the full taste, the rainbow of colors on the Mac Mini M2, but then maybe a slightly larger box, which has been previously rumored as sort of a mini half height Mac Pro but could be something entirely different, especially if Apple wants to keep this device as more of an appliance. Because since the 2019 relaunch, when the current Mac Pro replaced the old trash can Mac Pro, the very appliance-like trash uh, can Mac Pro, it has gone back to being modular, like the cheese grater of the past. It's really been a second generation cheese grater 2.0. And that means like the assumption is that it's gonna remain being modular, that it'll have PCIe slots that you'll be able to expand things beyond what you can do in almost any other Mac, pretty much any other Mac these days. I still don't think Apple would have made the 2019 Mac Pro as a one-off, like all those technologies, including the Mac, the MPX, the Mac uh, Pro expansion modules. But I do think that that will take time to break out from Apple Silicon because to date, all of the existing Apple Silicon products have been in that appliance style, in that system on a chip style with everything being on package, including the RAM, which allows for um, unified memory, which is really, really great, but is always gonna be confined to on package. Same thing, the GPUs are literally in an SOC, they're on the die. So if Apple has some form of either really ugly or really ingenious way of making those expandable, I mean, they've had off package RAM on iPads before, the A5X and I believe the A6X, 
and off-package RAM. But if Apple wants to reserve Mac Pro for a full-on modular Mac Pro, that just might take more time, more than they have bandwidth for this year. So in the meantime, we'll get that M2 consumer colorful Mac Mini, and then we'll get this, the M1 Pro and M1 Max, and dual M1 Max versions of the Mac Mini, either called you know Mac Mini, imp like the implication being that they're Pro because they're only available in silver and space gray and not in all those colors, or maybe as Mac Studio or some other name, because the way that works is Apple always has their ideal name that they put at the very top of the list, and then they have a whole list of alternate names because you never know when a name is gonna not work out for a variety of reasons, including what it sounds like maybe in another language. So if Apple is gonna simplify Mac Mini, Mac Studio, or whatever it ends up being called, and then Mac Pro, which will remain Intel and AMD for now, but eventually transition as the first modular uh, Apple Silicon Mac, only modular Apple Silicon Mac. 9to5Mac is also reporting on a Mac Studio, an Apple Studio display, which is not what we've been hearing about for a while, which is a lower end display, something less than 6K for 6K, something more consumer focused, $1,000, something like the 27 inch or 24 inch iMac just in standalone classical cinema display style. This would be more of a replacement for the current Pro Display XDR, which is, you know, 32 inches, not a mini LED of LED, but it does use technology like local dimming zones to make it all that it can be. This might be full on mini LED, but what they do say is that it would be a 7K panel up from six and larger up from 32 inches to 36 inches, which just sounds more like Pro Max display XDR at this point, and that it will have an A13 Bionic chipset in it, although it's unclear why. Some people have theorized it would be to take some of the graphical load off of a laptop so it wouldn't be quite the strain to run especially multiple versions of a display. Some people have wondered if it could be for universal control, although you figure if it's a display on a Mac, the Mac would handle universal control. It could be for something like AirPlay or Sidecar which doesn't have a computer attached to it, but makes it a secondary display, but does use that silicon to handle the stream so that it is much faster, much more responsive, even over a wireless connection than is otherwise and is normally possible. And having the ability to just put your computer down and use the screen, no plugs required. I mean, it goes against all my uh, loosely held Matrix and Battlestar Galactica hardline instincts, but that could be a really good solution for a lot of people especially as Apple keeps on pushing towards an almost completely wireless future. Now, whether or not we'll see any of this at the March 8th event, hard to say. I did point out in my last video, I have a whole preview video up on this already, and I'll drop a link to that in the description below the like button. But the visuals for it, the invitations for it, last year it was all bright white with the full on bleed in six colors, traditional Apple style logo on it. And this year it is dark and has much, of those, much more of those darker, richer hues. And it is Apple's longstanding tradition that bright and white and colorful represents consumer and the darker tones represent professionals. I mean, even on like iPhone announcements, Kyan Drance comes out and everything is bright and colorful and she goes over all the new iPhone features. And then the sun sets over Apple Park and Greg Joswiak comes out and there is a much darker motif for the pro level iPhones. So if there is a pro level surprise, Maybe it'll be some of this, maybe not all of this, maybe the higher level pro stuff. We'll still wait for WWDC, but I would just love to see it, especially given everything Apple is doing with their custom silicon these days. And to hear Apple explain just exactly how all of that silicon works, check out my interview with their VP of chipsets and VP of Mac marketing, ad-free, sponsor-free, and extended cuts on Nebula. Also, exclusive and original videos, including my new studio tour series with episode one, camera gear, and episode two, mics and sound, already live, and episode three, lighting, coming soon. Because on Nebula, I have the absolute luxury of making videos that don't have to be optimized for YouTube at all, but where I just know the nerdiest, most hardcore of you will totally love them, all ad-free, sponsor-free, on Nebula, and bundled in for free, when you sign up with today's sponsor at curiositystream.com slash Renee Ritchie or click the link below. And right now, today, because you're watching this video, you can get CuriosityStream on sale for 26% off, less than 15 bucks a year, less than the price of a USB-C dongle for the whole entire year. And that includes their thousands of amazing documentaries and series, including a whole section on technology that goes deep into not just the science, 
but the ethics of everything we're so busy racing to invent. It is the absolute best way to support educational creators directly and the best damn deal in streaming today. For over 26% off CuriosityStream, less than 15 bucks a year, and Nebula bundled in for free, just click the button on the screen or go to curiositystream.com slash Tony Ritchie. Clicking on that button really helps out the channel and so does hitting up this playlist for more on every new product Apple has coming our way this year. So hit up that playlist and I'll see you in the next video.